This is called the Nacto Cruiser, actually Super Cruiser. So check this thing out. Look at the body styling on this, everybody. I have been riding this bike off and on for around about a month now, and I really wanted to ride it around and really put it through its paces before giving you guys a review. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a quick walk through, kind of like components, speed testing, and my overall final thoughts on this. So you might wanna stick around to the end and check all that out because there is a hidden feature on this that I really Really can't wait to tell you guys and show you so yeah let's get into it now that's pretty good 34 Woo. this is where the bike goes really well i love it that i can kind of go off the beaten path Okay, so starting back here with the hub motor. This is a hub motor drive with a cadence sensor in the front and the motor on this thing is a 500 watt. There's a 500 watt option and a 750 watt option. This is a 500 watt brushless motor and it's got five pedal assist modes to it. Zero through five on the pedal assist. Zero being like nothing but just a normal bike all the way up to five to being topped out. It is a class three e-bike. So what that means being a class three e-bike, it top speeds up to 28 miles per hour but you know you can adjust that to whatever you want and inside the settings you can go into the settings and adjust all that too 160 millimeter rotor these are the zoom mechanical disc brakes you know nothing special here and i did have to adjust these out of the box so yeah i'd like to see hydraulic brakes on there but they got to save money somewhere and i think that's where they save money always is doing these mechanical brakes which you know they weren't the best at stopping but they did stop me by the way tires on this thing i absolutely love these big tires you know what i had i've been riding my smaller uh, fat tire that's a four inch you know they're 20 by four inch and those work fine but man let me tell you you have no idea what these things can go through these things are a tank these things are a beast i never want to go back to a, a 20 by four after using a 26 by four they are big tires they go over everything i could ride this thing off road i could do it on pavement i could go down grass sand you name it i took this thing everywhere and it handled it like a champ uh, this rear fender i'm not a fan of these fenders they're kind of noisy they are plastic they bounce a lot and this one actually came loose so if you get this bike one of the things you should do is go through and make sure you lock tight and tighten down all your bolts the bolt kind of rattled out and this whole thing kind of fell off and that's why there's scratches up there because it fell down and kind of got locked into the tire i had to stop and fix all that so that's one thing i'm probably going to remove these fenders I'm not the biggest fan of them you know they're okay and i get why they put them on there but me personally i think it looks better without them but i just left them on there for you guys to show you the video you do notice it does have a like a reflector there is no brake light on this i would like to see a brake light on this you might have to get your own little brake light and put up here which you could but this is low and it's in the right spot it's low where if a car does come behind you they will be able to see it the seat was good you know it has this adjustable seat this is pretty common on these e-bikes you adjust it right here this seat lifts up and this battery you turn it all the way off this battery is removal so you can take this battery out and take it inside and charge it and onto this battery it's a 48 volt 12 amp hour battery the range that they give it's 22 miles i got up around about 17 to 20 miles on this on average riding of using pedal assist and throttle control going kind of back and forth on those so uh, that's pretty fair 22 is kind of fair actually one of the few companies that actually put the right range on there because don't look at it and see that 22 and think oh that's not enough that's actually pretty accurate which is the first time for me that the company actually put an accurate range pedals on this thing surprisingly they come with a type of alloy pedal these are not those cheaper plastic ones i was impressed they're actually kind of a wide pedal too so i won't be upgrading these pedals because i think those are really good this has a big hump up right here looks really cool kind of like a motorcycle type look on it front fork this is a 60 millimeter travel this doesn't lock out it doesn't adjust nothing special kind of normal on these kind of like affordable e-bikes the front headlights seem to work really 
really well. To turn it on, you hit this switch here. You got a horn button here, a headlight switch here. 160 millimeter mechanical disc brakes in the front, front fender. Once again, was a little noisy, but you know what? It worked. Check this out. I love the looks of these hand grips. They have this gold yellowish top look to it. Does that not look cool? I love that look. Like does not look so e-bikey up here, if that makes any sense. This thing looks really good. Uh, your display, you got adjustment here, you know, up, down, the power buttons under here. Shifter, this is a six speed Shimano. If you look back here, it's a, this is a Turney TZ, which is kind of a standard shifter on a lot of these e-bikes. I did have to adjust it a little bit out of the box. So luckily, if you're a little bit mechanically inclined on working on a bike, you should be fine on all this. Throttle control over here. This is a thumb throttle, not a twist throttle. Let me do a quick speed test for y'all and give some riding and show you exactly what I put this bike through from zero to five and what it can handle. So yeah, let's go ahead and let's click over to that now. Horn works, the light, you can turn the light on, but there's nothing right up there to show you that it's on. You basically just got to look over and see that your light's on. Remember I said I'd show you guys something really cool on this bike that I liked a lot. Here it is. So when you're up to speed, holding your throttle, mash down on the adjuster like pad over here. Watch when I mash down and watch the setting that comes up. Boom. Yeah, see what that is? This has cruise control. Check it out. Legs are not moving, not touching the throttle. This is awesome. This actually feels like you're just kind of floating. Look, I just went up to five. Reset it. Cruise control set at 20. Boom. The tires are so big, it kind of absorbs a lot of it. Anyway, look how it just mows over things. You feel like a beast in this thing. The fenders do rattle a little bit, you can hear it. And let's go zero. So this is no pedal assist at all. You can see the throttles off. I mean, gear one. And let's just use it like a normal bike. I think pedaling this like a normal bike, I think that it goes best between one and three. You'd probably use, you know, four, five, six going down a hill, but I can feel the weight of this thing. But overall, because of the size of the tires, it doesn't feel bad using it as a bike. I actually don't mind it at all. It just feels like a normal fat tire bike. All right, let's go to one. So I'm in pedal assist one. So uh, this is a cadence sensor, not a torque sensor. So as soon as I went to one, it almost, I felt the motor kick in instantly. And just pedaling it like this, this holds extremely well. Yeah, that's pretty easy. All right, let's go to number two. We're on pedal assist two. Not much difference. There's not much of a difference between one and two, which is to be expected. Two seems to be holding right at about 11. Let's go to three. Three gained us about another three to four miles per hour. Throttle matches. So the setting that I have is throttle matches the pedaling at all times. So whatever my pedaling is, is what my throttle is. That is a setting that you can set in there. And the speedometer seems to be fairly correct. Okay, there's a note. I felt a difference in power on four. I'm throttle only. Now I'm pedaling. It feels like it starts ghost pedaling at about 16, 17 miles an hour. All right, now let's go five. Max power, throttle only. Their speed's got me at 21, 22, 23, almost 24, running out of real estate. Oh yeah. I would think we could get to 24. So max power on that, I can I feel like I could get up to about 25 on setting five. Pretty easy to hold this at 25.
you can see I got it up to 28 average speeds 13. So there you go everybody there's the quick kind of component walkthrough and overall final opinion of this bike. I have no issues I love the styling on this I love how it rides rides super comfortable very easy to ride kind of goes over everything if you're looking for kind of an affordable e-bike that will kind of get you down anything and take care of you I recommend the Nacto Super Cruiser. So yeah, you guys leave in the comments below if you've got any experience on these Nacto Super Cruisers, because I always like what you have to say, and I will have some more e-bike comparisons coming up. I'll have links below where you can pick one of these up if it's something that you think you might want, or if you got any questions on this, I can do my best to help you out. Let's get to riding. Nacto Super Cruiser. Let's get out of here. Woo!